The following audio supported podcast is intended for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended as medical advice. Please speak with your healthcare professional before making any treatment decisions. The guests on today's show were paid to participate in this podcast. Welcome back to Just Listen Voices of PK Deficiency. I'm your host, Dr. Rachel Grace. In the U.S., June is the month of Father's Day for those who celebrate it. In honor of that, this episode features a father and his daughter. You might remember Nathan Thompson from our very first episode of the show. Nathan has pyruvate kinase deficiency and shared his story with us. If you haven't listened to that episode yet, please be sure to go back and cue that up. For today's conversation, Nathan is back with his daughter, Zoe. Zoe shares her unique perspective on what it was like growing up with a dad who has PK deficiency, and Nathan talks about how his PK deficiency has affected his parenting. One of the challenges of having PK deficiency or any chronic diagnosis that begins in childhood is that the impact of the disease and the needs of that individual change tremendously over time. Because of that, those providing and receiving support from that individual also need to recognize these evolving needs and make changes in how they provide and receive support over time. The understanding of the disease and its impact really varies from childhood to adolescence to adulthood, both for the affected individual but also for their guardians, siblings, and eventually their children. We are so fortunate to have Nathan and his daughter Zoe here today to speak about the impact of PK deficiency on their family. It's a great conversation and we hope you enjoy it. Let's listen in. I'm Nathan Thompson. I am from Idaho and I'm currently living with PKD. I'm Zoe Thompson and my dad lives with PKD. Nathan, how did you tell Zoe about your pyruvate kinase deficiency? I first told Zoe about PKD more gradually, I think. Growing up, it was never a one-time sit-down big explanation. I think it was a culmination of little explanations over a long period of time that kind of added up to this general sense of understanding, I hope, that instead of unloading it all as a big dump, I didn't want to dump all that information onto her in one sitting. So I think just growing up, we tried to gradually introduce her to some of my limitations. Nathan, how has pyruvate kinase deficiency affected your parenting? Up until recently, I thought I was a pretty terrible father because I felt I failed my children in a lot of ways. I compared myself to able-bodied people frequently, and it really led to feelings of disappointment in myself and kind of shame. And, you know, recently, since I started working with a therapist, I realized that I did the best I could. I don't think there was any time when I purposefully or even I didn't do as much as I thought I should every day. And regardless of whether that wasn't as much, it was enough because so turned out awesome. I've got some great kids. I, I feel like being a father has been one of the most difficult things I've ever done, but one of the most fulfilling. I feel proud that my dad thinks I'm cool. <laughs> I worked for as long as I can remember. As soon as I was able to start working, I felt that was the right thing to do and what I was expected of me, regardless of my ability to do so or even do so well. And so it left a gap for my home life. I wasn't as present as I would have liked to have been. I'd work eight or 10 hours a day and come home and fall asleep and get up the next morning and do it again. There was rarely any times when I felt like I was able to just feel good and relax and be with my kids and not worry about pain and not worry about where am I going to sit down if I need to. And there was always this feeling in the back of my mind that if I wasn't putting my kids first, then I wasn't doing the right thing. And it led to a lot of complications down the road, but also led led to feelings that I did leave that let my kids down in some sense. But I really do feel like I tried, but it was difficult being there as a father, even on weekends sometimes, spend the whole weekend trying to recover from the work week and still feel miserable going into work on Monday. It was pretty tough to be there as a father. I don't feel like I was ever let down as a kid because my dad wasn't present. From my understanding of what PKAD was, being gradually eased into it. I understood that my dad was tired than most people, so I never felt let down or disappointed. There were times where I wish he was there, but I understood why he couldn't be there. But the times that he had energy to participate in family outings and things like that were really special to me. 
we would go camping and I remember we went on a picnic and there were like memories that I'll always have because they're a little more special than it did that for me too. I didn't make it to many of those cheerleading practices and games that she attended, but the times I did make it, it really did feel really important. It was a big thing for me. And so I feel like hopefully it imparted a sense of importance to let her know how hard I tried to be there. Zoe, do you remember a time when your dad couldn't participate in an activity that meant something to you? What did that feel like? Most of the time I would feel like a little sad or disappointed at first, but if I think about it on the bright side, it gave me some independence where I want to rely on somebody else's gratification. Like whenever I participated in a sport or an activity, it was because I enjoyed doing it and I was doing it for me instead of making my family proud. But I think it did give me some independence. Agios is a biopharmaceutical company that's fueled by connections with patient communities, professionals, partners, and each other. Building on these connections and the company's unmatched leadership in the field of cellular metabolism, Agios is pioneering therapies of genetically defined diseases, a broad group of rare and more common diseases that are typically severe and life-threatening. Near term, Agios is focusing on advancing a clinical pipeline of medicines for hereditary hemolytic anemias. To learn more about PK deficiency, visit knowpkdeficiency.com. That's K N O W P K deficiency.com. Nathan, as parents, we always tend to put our kids first. Is that different when you live with PK deficiency? It's absolutely. Putting your kids first as a parent with PKD is very difficult because you have to balance your home life and your work life. And ideally, you don't work as hard or as much as you could. So you have some energy or stamina left over to spend with your children. And it really, it's a juggling act. And you feel like sometimes there's so much going on that all you can do is keep all the balls in the air. And you're lucky just to not have any major catastrophe and that's the best you can do. Nathan, how did you best support Zoe? Now that I'm retired, uh, I'd have to say that my support comes in emotional and I try to spend as much time with them as possible to be present. I try to contact them every day and let them know how much I love them and think about them because I have a little bit of extra time on my hands and I'm not just totally wiped out. So I feel like I'm able to be more present for them in other ways that I wasn't able to before when I was working all the time. I feel like I'm going to be able to be a more loving and caring and present father and able to show that more easily. I agree. I think it's emotionally because I feel like I can tell my dad anything and he won't come at me with any judgment and only give me advice and support if I need it. So what did you do to support your dad? I could do a better job at it, but I think I try to listen to my dad emotionally and he will bring up things that he discovered in himself by going to therapy. So I just try to put in my little two cents and comfort as much as I can. I don't have much life experience. Sometimes it's not the best words (laughs) that I could use, but I try my best to relate to my situations. To be honest, I love the way that she relates to me because the wisdom of the youth now, it really gives me a sense of hopefulness. And I really like the perspectives that the younger generation has come to accept and embrace. And so her to bring that into my life and just to be willing to share that and involve me like she would. More of a friend we have as adults now, we're both moving from the daughter-child-father relationship to grown adults having a relationship and who are able to communicate from a different generational perspective. And even though Molly is her father, she still turns me into the new hip words and stuff. I mean, I'm sure hip's not new, but just it's great that she brings me up to the current culture kind of stuff and keys me into some of the stuff I feel left out on and provides me with a perspective of younger kids that really does provide me a lot. When Agios gave us the opportunity to go to Boston, I feel like a a way I supported my dad was since I'm able-bodied, I was able to push him around. And I know that with PKD, you experience brain fog. So I helped keep us on time and navigated us around the airport. And I was in charge of just keeping everything 
together. I wouldn't have been able to do the Boston trip without her assistance. It was amazing, all the help she gave. I hope we can do more stuff like that. I'd love to travel more with her because she was so good at taking care of me and making sure that my needs were met. I was helping him pick his outfits, and (laughs) he doesn't really like my music taste. It's also good to hear it. I wouldn't be exposed to it otherwise. I think your generation's openness and disregarding the toxic masculinity of olden times, like our parents had more of the don't cry attitude and it seems like her generation is totally cool with yeah dudes go to therapy dudes cry dudes have feelings and that isn't something that i feel like a lot of people my generation experienced from their peers and mentors so that's a huge for me is to validate those feelings that i've had to push down a lot because dudes aren't supposed to show that they're tired dudes aren't supposed to have that feeling of any feelings. You're just supposed to go to work and be a man. And sometimes with PKD, you can't do that at all. And it's cool that this generation is a lot more acceptant of that. And I think another thing is from my dad's understanding that if he got somebody with the same gene of PKD, it could be passed down to his children. So he married my mom, who's Thai. So when he saw me growing up as a person of color in a predominantly white town, and he saw my struggles, I think it gave him an understanding of racism and microaggressions. And it taught me also there's a lot of different ways of being left out, whether it's your skin color or whether it's your ability. It's hard to be not one of the crowd, not being able to fit in as well, especially especially in a small town like where we live. I've actually been in therapy a year and a half or so ever since I moved into this nursing facility. And it's changed my life. It's been the best thing I could ever do. I wish I had started therapy 40 years ago. As anybody living with a rare disease or a person of color or a person of a different gender affiliate, there's so many reasons why we're individual and society makes us not feel proud of that. And it's important to go to a therapist and understand that you're just living in your head and that it's not the way everybody feels. And my therapist has really helped me with a lot of the things I struggled with for all of my life. And it's changed my perspective in the last year immensely. Things have turned around awesome for me. I'm doing really great now. I've noticed that he has a more positive outlook on life with being able to understand his feelings and understand the medical trauma that he's been through. And just being able to be comfortable to talk about it to a therapist means that he's comfortable to talk about it to me, which has given me a better understanding of him as a person. I think fathers should know for this upcoming Father's Day that even with PKD, even if they don't have enough energy to support and be there physically, that every child with a parent of PKD knows that their parent is there in spirit. And even if they're not able to give the support they think is expected of them, that they're still appreciated and loved. I'd say to all the fathers out there with PKD who have children, don't beat yourself up. Getting through the day sometimes is the best you can do. And your family knows that. And they live with you every day. And so reminding yourself of your shortcomings every day is not productive or helpful because the people around you already love you, whether you meet up to your expectations or not. You've surpassed theirs just by being around and being present and being in their lives and showing that you care by the little things. And just being able to do as much as you can do is the best that you can do for them. And they know that they really do see that. And it's taken me a long time to realize that as bad as I had felt about myself, nobody was looking down on me. I was beating myself up far more than anybody else could. I hope that we can grow our relationship even more and we can continue to support each other. He also had to have a liver and kidney transplant and those aren't for forever, which is really sad to say. I've already processed that. I've been sad about that already, but I really hope there's enough time that he can make it to big steps in my life, like my wedding, if I ever have children, if I ever adopt children, hopefully he can meet his grandchildren. Hopefully there's enough time for that. I'm really proud that my daughter has showed an interest in not only my own issues, but the PKD community as a whole and has a desire to learn and have herself grow, but like also to advocate for people in her position because I think it's unique to have a parent with shortcomings or a parent who has different abilities or disabilities as it may be, and to grow up with that your entire life. And I think it's 
a unique and worth sharing because it's a tough life. And I know she had to grow up fast and it means a lot to me that our relationship too is now growing. Hopefully she's learned the lessons that I've tried to teach her as a child and we can start on the lessons as an adult she needs to learn. <laughs> but yes, yeah, it's really just an honor to be here and this whole thing has been great. Thanks for listening to Just Listen, Voices of Pyruvate Kinase Deficiency. Don't forget to hit that follow button in your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. Share the show with members of the PK Deficiency community. And if you'd like to learn more about PK Deficiency and see what resources there are to support people impacted by PK Deficiency, visit nopkdeficiency.com. That is no, K-N-O-W-P-K-deficiency.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Rachel Grace, and we look forward to talking with you again.